Hello dear learners, welcome again. In this video, I am going to explain the limitations of macroeconomics. In the previous video, I have discussed nature and scope of macroeconomics. If you are interested, you can watch the video. I have given the link in the description box. So, let's start with the topic and request you to watch till the end. And if you find it helpful, please like it and subscribe it. There are six important limitations of macroeconomics. Number one is fallacy of composition. What is the meaning of fallacy? Fallacy means uh, use of invalid or faulty reasoning or logic. And fallacy of composition means the error of assuming that what is true of a member of a group is true for the group as a whole. For example, in a class, if five students scored 70% marks, therefore concluding that all the students scored 70% marks would be fallacious. In economics, we have one important example of fallacy of composition that is paradox of thrift. Paradox of thrift was popularized by renowned economist John Maynard Keynes. It states that individuals try to save more during economic recession, which essentially leads to a fall in aggregate demand and hence fall in economic growth. This is because if individual saves, his saving increases. But if all individuals start saving, total saving in the economy goes down. Why? When individual saves, it actually means a reduction in consumption, expenditure or a reduction in income of others. Unless there is equal amount of investment, once income goes down, it will affect capacity to save because saving depends on income. So this is the first limitation of macroeconomics. Number two is treating aggregates as homogeneous, which is not true. The main defect of macroeconomic analysis is that it regards the aggregates as homogeneous without caring about their internal composition and structure. The average wage in a nation is the sum of total wages in all professions, that is wages of clerks, typists, teachers, professors, doctors, nurses, etc. But the volume of aggregate employment depends on the relative structure of wages rather than on average wage. This is the second limitation. And third one is aggregate variables may not be important necessarily. Let us understand this uh, limitation. The aggregate variable which are part of entire economy may not be of much significance. For instance, the national income of a country is the total of all individual income. A rise or hike in national income does not mean that individual incomes have risen. The increase in national income might be the result of increase in the incomes of a few rich people in the nation. Maybe increase of, there may be increase in income of Ambani's and Adani's and Tata's, but not the common man. Thus, a rise in national income of this type has little significance from the point of view of the community. So, this is third point. Fourth point is excessive generalization. Despite the immense importance of macroeconomics, there is a danger of excessive generalization from individual experience to the system as a whole. If an individual withdraws his deposits from the bank, there is no harm in it. But if all the persons rush to withdraw deposits, the bank would collapse. So, this is the other limitation of macroeconomics. The fifth limitation of macroeconomics is aggregates may be functionally 
must be functionally related. The aggregates must be significant and mutually consistent. And let us understand this in other words. Uh, this, this should be functionally related. The variable should be functionally related. For example, aggregate consumption and investment expenditure, which is part of microeconomic theory, income is equal to consumption expenditure and investment expenditure we have studied in Keynes theory. It will have no importance if they are not functionally related to the levels of income interest and employment. If these composing aggregates are mutually inconsistent uh, or are not functionally related, the study of macroeconomic theory will be of little use. So, the uh, uh, variables aggregates should be functionally related. If they are not, then the, it will become less useful and this is one of the limitations of macroeconomics and the last point is indiscriminate use of macroeconomics may result in misleading results an indiscriminate use of macroeconomics in an analyzing the complexities of the real world can frequently be misleading for example if the policy measures needed to achieve and maintain full employment in the economy are applied to structural problems in individual firms, individual company, individual industry, they become irrelevant or of less useful. Likewise, measures aimed at controlling general prices cannot be applied with much advantage for controlling prices of individual products. So, these six are the important limitations of macroeconomics. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give your comments and feedback.